Southeast Asia is home to different communities of sea nomads or sea gypsies. These sea nomads, whom life is predominantly spent afloat and ashore, are divided linguistically, culturally, and geographically into three groups. The Baja Lot, Orang Lot, and the Mokan. These three groups share a common way of life, as they depend their lives on the sea, move around, from one place to another, with their boats, and create villages along the coast. Their professions typically include coastal and pelagic fishermen, pearl divers, boat builders, traders in sea products, ship crew and even pirates. The social organization of these groups is characterized by the principles of independence, equality, and seniority, and primarily, based on kinship ties. The beliefs and convictions of the majority still refer to their natural environment, which they experience as animated nature. Some have become converts to Islam or Christianity, and only recently have claimed religious affiliation as a striking feature of their identity, like the Bajalot. Because of their high local mobility, sea nomads have always been in contact with members of other ethnic groups of their respective regions, but these contacts have mostly been confined to economic transactions. And even today, both sides normally tend to avoid any closer social relationships. One of these three groups is called Bajalot, the sea nomads residing in the Philippines, Malaysian Borneo, or the Sulawesi, who live in boats which they call Lipa. Bajalot believes that the sea is their homeland and that their world extends from the Sulawesi Sea to Kalimantan, Indonesia, Mindanao, Sulu, and Palawan, Philippines, and to Sabah, Malaysia, and Brunei. They are said to be the masters of the sea as they own the waters of these places, make living from fishing, and rarely sets foot on land. While Bajalot is typically a single nuclear family, some leaves an extended household, if the houseboat is large enough, or if a newly married couple has not yet acquired its own houseboat. Although very independent, the nuclear family is not completely isolated as it regularly attaches itself to a larger group especially when it moorage. It anchors itself near to the house or houseboats of its kinsmen, for them to be together and celebrate ceremonies. In the Philippines, despite their isolation to the Islamized communities of Tawi-Tawi, similar Muslim traditions such as superincision or locally called as Pag Islam, is evident in the Bajalot community. Although Bajalot are now Muslims, many still believe in the spirit world of the sea, which must be appeased through rituals and offerings. The practice of marrying within the relatives is widely accepted and considered to be the best option. The Bajalot are free to marry their relatives except the members within the nuclear family, grandparents and siblings of parents and grandparents. First cousin marriage is accepted except between patrilateral parallel cousins and those who were raised together intimately by the same woman. Within the Bajalot family, there is an equal division of labor between the husband and the wife. The husband, with the consultation of the wife, takes major decisions, while it is the wife who commonly handles the finances and takes care of household chores such as childcare, cooking, weaving, repairing of fishing nets, and taking care of the children. Because of their houseboat living set up, there is an established strong intimacy within the family. Although the lifestyle of many Bajalot are now sedentary, many Bajalot of Malaysia remained only semi-sedentarized, as they still occasionally venture forth in the Lipa that they have retained along the east coast of Sabah for fishing or visiting relatives. In fact, there remains a population of Bajalot as well, still living on houseboats, constituting 22% of Sampurna's population in 2014. These boat holds still move along Sabah's eastern coast between Kudit in the north and Samporna in the southeast, and even extending their voyages, depending upon fishing opportunities or the demands of patrons, to other sites and into Indonesian Kalimantan. Some periodically return to Philippine waters, often to their places of ancestral origin, in the islands of Tawi-Tawi and other sites in the Sulu archipelago or Palawan. Orang Lot, or the tribe of sea people, are the group of sea nomads consisting of numerous subgroups whose permanent dwelling is their boats, without any fixed habitation on the shore, and are found in the coasts and waters of the Thai Malay Peninsula and Sumatra. Orang Lot do not venture beyond their own territory or their specific territory of maritime exploitation. 
For hundreds, if not thousands of years, Orang Logs specialized in collecting natural products, which they exchanged with the inhabitants of settlements located in estuaries along the Straits of Malacca. These Zee people were usually allied with a patron, either Malay or Chinese, who claimed exclusive rights to trade with them, and was seen as their protector. Orang Lod has once dominated the Malacca Straits, the most important trade channel in Southeast Asia, as they once patrolled the waters. Historical accounts has linked Orang Lod to piracy, depicting them as having been formidable maritime raiders during the early 19th century, as such, piratical activities are closely tied in their way of life. Today, Orang Lot modes of earning a livelihood are spear fishing, collecting marine and forest products, and hunting sea mammals and coastal animals for both subsistence and small scale trading with Chinese middlemen. The Orang Lot communities consist of various clans, who were occasionally at war with each other. Given their distribution in clusters, there was never a single Orang Lot leader. Their social organization is based on ties of kinship and the ideal of endogamy. Like the Bajau lot, nuclear families are the basic social units. A few nuclear families of close kinsmen join together into mobile groups that travel on their own, each led by an elder, or live in corresponding groupings in settlements ashore. Every family and every group of kinsmen is socially and economically similar and independent. The Orang Lod inscribe their identities into the seascape. For them, the water world is an ordered network of kin-related territories. It is a geography that articulates the movement of social life, which has transformed the watery spaces into an environment of familiar roots and places. Their beliefs and convictions refer to their natural environment which they experience as animated nature. They regarded the sea as an inalienable gift from their ancestors, and as such their occupancy of it cannot be separated, removed, or alienated from them. For the Orang Lot, giving birth, naming, and learning to perceive the seascape are embedded in a direct and mutually attentive interaction of the self with their water world. As life reveals itself, Orang Lot believes that the water world is about engagement and not imposition, about dwelling and not building, and about embracing a view or rather than formulating a view. The water world is not simply a physical setting for the Orang Lot. Rather, it is a world made for them in which they have a well-defined part to play, and one in which they are intimately involved in a relationship of interdependence with the rise and ebb of tides, maritime creatures and flora, as well as sea spirits. The water world is saturated with agency and intentionality. It will share its bounty reciprocally, in return for favors that are given to it, or for ongoing interpersonal dialogues that demonstrate respect. Hence, the Orang Lot see themselves and all components of the water world interacting within a single all-embracing cosmic reality. Mokan or the Sea Gypsies of the Andaman Sea, is the third group of sea nomads which resides in Mergi Archipelago, off the coasts of Myanmar and Thailand. Just like the Bajau Lot and Orang Lot, Mokan spend most of the year on their boats, which they called Kabang, and survive through maritime hunting or fishing. But during the wet monsoon season, Mokan builds temporary shelters on the coasts, and relied on food gathering in the forests and trading for survival. Mokan are usually believed to have played a rather marginal role in Southeast Asia trade and commerce. Early 20th century ethnographic studies depict them as extremely timid, immediately fleeing at the sight of strangers. However, epigraphic evidence suggests that the Mokan played an important role in the history of Southeast Asia, as they were once fierce pirates themselves. In addition, a small set of nautical terms seems to have reached the Southeast Asian mainland through Mokan-speaking people. Mokan sees the ocean as their entire universe. Their lives revolve around the sea, everything happens at sea and they are not bound to any land. Mokan are all animists and have great understanding and respect for their environment and natural resources. Mokan are culturally distinct from Thais and Burmese, speak their own languages, and have their own set of traditions. However, the Mokan do not have a written language, and their history is passed down verbally through folklore from generation to generation. Like Bajau Lot and Orang Lot, Mokan's family connections are strong and dependable. Marriage in Mokan follows certain beliefs. When a girl starts to have breasts, and upon her first menstruation, she can get married already. Mokan tribe also believes that, if a man really loves a woman, there are things that a man should do, 
before asking for the hand of the woman, in order to prove himself to his intended wife and her parents. He is required to build and finish a boat by himself. The man must also walk into the forest alone, and never be afraid of ghosts or wild animals. Mulkan men propose with a sarong, a shirt, and a set of silver bracelets. For Mulkan tribe, there is no real marriage ceremony, instead, they only prepare one chicken and one bottle of liquor, and pray to the elders. After marriage, the lovers will sleep together on the boat. As the world globalizes, these three groups of sea nomads face challenges, such as social inclusion, poverty, and external pressures, just like the other indigenous people in Southeast Asia. Their nomadic habits were being opposed by the national governments which resulted in the ongoing large-scale processes of semi-compulsory sedentization. Historically these sea people lived entirely on boats and spent most of their lives on the sea, but today, the descendants of Mokin, Bajau Lot, and Orang Lot, reside almost exclusively in stilt houses near the shore. Although other Orang Lot persist in maintaining their seafaring lifestyles, some of them have already moved ashore. This change is completely evident in the western Sabah, where the vast majority of boat dwelling group have now settled down in land, allocated by the government. Today, the Indonesian and Singaporean authorities are exerting great pressure to suppress the mobility of Orang Lot. Systematic programs of directed change have been operationalized to reorient them towards becoming sedentary and becoming citizens of the nation states, with the obligation to observe notions of borders and boundaries. Similarly, the Mokan's maritime existence that recognizes no national boundaries is endangered. They have been frequently persecuted by the Thai and the Burmese governments, both of whom are watchful of their borderless lives and have tried to settle them permanently in national parks. In recent years, the number of Mokan semi-nomads have diminished due to political and post-tsunami regulations, governments easing their lands for tourism development, and industrial fishing, and other modernized activities. Today, many Mokan now live permanently in bamboo hut villages, selling handicrafts as souvenirs and working as boatmen for tourism industry. Also, instead of Lipa, Bajau Lot now lives on stilt houses. Some of these houses have metal sheets for roofing instead of traditional nipper and marine plywood for walls, and are now painted. Development projects in the southern Philippines like the construction of the Tawi Tawi Bridge and a paved road that connects Pahit to Bongao, led to habitat loss, which in turn, displaced the Bajau Lot. This forced displacement led to a shift in mode of residence from Urij to village, Along with this shift in residence came the shift from sea-based modes of production fishing and boat building to land-based modes of production, such as horticulture, full-time vendors of fish, hired farmhands, and other odd jobs in urban areas, such as pedicab drivers. This also created a shift in their traditional modes of exchange from barter to full use of money. The culture and way of life of these sea nomads has been slowly changing and fading away with the continuous globalization and modernization. Policies and processes of the ASEAN governments render these groups of sea nomads stateless, making them susceptible to state actions resulting in continued exclusion and dispossession. While the formation of the ASEAN Economic Community in 2015 has opened up transporter movements for skilled labor, it has failed to address the plight of transporter populations, such as the Bajau Lot, Orang Lot, and Mokan. Indeed, there is an impending need for the ASEAN to include the political, economic, and cultural issues of these marginalized maritime communities, not only for the realization of ASEAN community, but also for the preservation of these maritime culture.